All right, so I have a short video I published a couple days ago where I kind of talked about proxies and how you can set them up. I wanted to have a little talk kind of explaining like why are proxies important, All right? Because if you look at a proxy, you might not understand like the purpose of it. But most of these front-end frameworks, at least some of the good ones, they use the built-in JavaScript proxy to basically listen to when your state is changing, right? So they'll create a proxy, they'll pass it some type of data, and then whenever that data is changed, they will run some function. So I think Svelte does this potentially behind the scenes or Vue. Um, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the way Svelte works is I believe when you start declaring this stuff, I believe they're just like making proxies over these, these variables. And when you assign any value to these variables, it's going to re-render your Svelte component. Um, just call me out if I'm wrong on that, but I think that's, my, that's how Svelte might do it behind the scenes. They might kind of compile this code down to use proxies. Vue might do something similar, they might not. Um, there's like another library called like HyperHTML that I saw, HyperHTML, which kind of did something similar where they just used the built-in ES6 proxies to render state and re-render the page. But anyway, the point of the proxy is like you can invoke some type of side effect whenever your object changes, right? So if I have an object here called like, I don't know, person, and that person has an age of 20, whenever I go down here and I say person age is equal to negative one, I could actually have this code throw an error, right? By using a proxy, I can kind of listen to when age is being changed. And if it's negative or some like crazy value, I can just throw an error or I can send off a side effect to like log something. You can also use proxies for like wrapping third party objects that you don't have control over. Sometimes you'll de you're dealing with a third party library, they might send you back an object or you might have to pass in an object and you need to wrap that object you're sending in um, in a proxy so that you can actually get more information about it. Like, I don't know, wait, maybe you're trying to measure some type of performance in your application and you need to actually start like doing console.times to log out when stuff is happening and get like these, these deltas between how long it took to do stuff. Proxies are really cool, but I want to show you this example that I'm doing in this little um, React application where I'm actually using a proxy to wrap some state that was passed in. So if I go over here, I have a component called toppings modal control proxy. And this basically is the full component. It's this modal right here, okay? That's what it is. But the state inside the modal, it's actually just a proxy, right? So I, I have this helper function called use proxy state. I pass it some initial state, which has toppings and selected toppings. If I look at this uh, helper function, this helper hook, I guess you can call it, all it's doing is taking that initial state it's using a memo to kind of like cache the value of the proxy that we create. And we kind of wrap that initial state with a proxy, right? So that gives me the ability to basically say, hey, I'm going to force React the render, re-render anytime someone decides to change any properties on an initial state, right? So I basically have this like little hack here with a counter and I just increment the counter and mod it by the max number in JavaScript. And that'll kind of tell React to re-render whenever someone modifies this proxy. And what this allows me to do is I can actually modify my, my wrapped initial state here, right? I call it the model in this example. But I can actually just do like typical JavaScript assignments, right? I, guess I can say toppings of, I don't know, whatever. And the moment I assign that, that is going to invoke my proxy. My proxy is going to go up here and it's going to set that value. And then it's going to increment some count the force react to re-render and then I'll see that topping stuff change in my application, right? So as I'm clicking through things, in fact, let me just find that function, toggle topping, you'll see all I'm doing is I'm saying model.selected toppings is equal to a new object. And that's just going to force react to re-render and I don't have to do all that immutable stuff. There's one thing I want to complain about and that is the dogma of immutable code. I do understand immutable code has benefits and I've actually run into many bugs. I, I shouldn't say many. I have run into bugs in the past where you are dealing with a JavaScript object that you think should, should be like filled with a bunch of constants, right? So imagine like a configuration object, but somewhere in your code base, someone changed a property on that constant object. And it took like a really weird a uh, use case of a user clicking one page and then clicking a modal, that modal had bad code that was mutating a constants object. 
and then when you ever go to a different page, it would crash. So it was a really, really strange bug in our React application, which was caused by uh, mutable code. But that was like the only instance I've actually ran into big issues with mutable code. And with, I, I don't want to call it dogma, but I do feel like it is kind of dogma of people saying immutable code is better. It's better, but the developer experience for using it sucks, right? Like if you compare just like setting a variable to something new versus saying like set count and then having to say like previous count, uh, previous plus one or something, like you, you, could, you can't argue that model count is equal to plus one or something or plus plus right this this is like the most basic scenario but this is a immutable code approach which is what basically react says you have to do because they decided to prescribe that to us versus this is typically how you do it in like svelte this is how you do it in view which one of these makes more sense from a mental model i would say that this one the mutating code statement makes a lot more sense it's easier to read and especially if you're a beginner learning JavaScript and you're transitioning to these like front end frameworks, this one is something that we already know. Okay. This one is functional programming that we don't know with like immutable code. And it just really complicates what we have to learn to be become proficient at React. So that's my main gripe with React is like the, you know, the pres prescribed immutable code that you have to basically do. I'm sorry the prescribed immutable approaches to state that we have to do. And I know you can bring in something like Emmer, but Emmer kind of sucks as well because you have to like call a bunch of other functions just so you can have a little callback that you can actually like mutate state with. It just seems kind of hacky. Um, so something like this, like honestly, if React wasn't so popular, like if I had to pick between all the languages, I'd probably pick Svelte right now because it's the most intuitive. But we're stuck with React to be the most popular. Um, and I just wish that people weren't so dogmatic about like everything must be immutable state changes because I think just changing the model or changing your state using like assignments, it works perfectly fine. Especially if you're like one to test your code, just write unit tests over your code and you know, it's going to be fine. Um, and then also just use like an object freeze or a deep freeze on stuff that stuff on things that you should know should never change. But for the most part, like when we're dealing with react state, we know it needs to change. So it should be mutable. Um, anyway, I don't even know where I just took that whole, this whole video. I was talking about proxies and then I started talking about this like approach of using the proxy to render these changes to the react components. When people change the model, I talked about why I'm using mutable approaches for this. And then I went on a rant. So I don't know if you enjoyed this uh, little video where I'm jumping all over the place, leave a comment. Let me know. If you want to fight me about immutable versus mutable code and state changes, uh, feel free to join me Discord and you can yell at me there. Or you can just join me Discord if you want to learn more about what I'm doing or just find a community of other developers who are willing to help you when you get stuck. I'm trying to build a Discord of people who are like friendly and willing to help you if you get stuck on a bug. So jump over to my Discord. I think the link is in the description and I would be more than welcome. I would be more than glad to have you all tag along and uh you know continue this coding journey with each other anyway hope you guys learned something have a good day and happy coding